Good morning. <clears throat> Today we are looking at the distinction between awareness and consciousness. Many times you find that people confuse the two. And it's important to get it clear so that this can be some clarity. People can be understood what it's meaning. So here are some distinctions between awareness and consciousness. Let's look at awareness first. Some of the names that awareness has are suchness, isness, beingness. Some of the qualities that it has are that it's ungraspable. You're not going to grasp it and look at it. It's unreifiable. You can't make it into something. It's not a thing. It's described as sky-like. It, it doesn't evolve. Awareness doesn't evolve. Awareness doesn't change. Awareness doesn't move. Awareness underlies everything. Awareness is a supreme intelligence. Inconceivable in its magnitude. That informs everything that appears. That pervades everything that appears. Awareness never comes into being or goes out of being. Awareness is not in one place more than in another. Awareness has no season. Awareness isn't in one thing more than another. Awareness isn't in one time more than another. Before all time, there was awareness. Throughout all time, there is awareness. After all creation is dissolved, there is awareness remaining. Awareness is the domain in which all life, in every way, comes into being. Now consciousness is different. And how is it different? Consciousness is the quality of something. Consciousness is the quality. There has to be an I that has consciousness. There has to be an I that has consciousness. Consciousness comes and goes. When we are in deep sleep, dreamless sleep, there is no consciousness. There's awareness, but there's not consciousness. Why? Because consciousness needs an I. In deep sleep, it is a fact that if you see someone who's in deep sleep and you take their hand gently and put it in a bucket of warm water, they will urinate. 
Why? Because they're aware, there's awareness of something happening, but it's not conscious. If you were conscious, if there was consciousness, you wouldn't urinate. It's a spontaneous reaction, but it's coming out of an awareness of something happening. So the awareness remains. It never goes anywhere. But consciousness does. There aren't states of awareness. There is just awareness. There are states of consciousness. Oh, i am got a very high state of consciousness today. I'm buzzing. Oh, I've got a very low state of consciousness. Oh, I've got no consciousness today. I'm asleep. There consciousness that has different kinds of qualities to it. Whereas awareness has no qualities. So consciousness we could say is a function of awareness as everything else is as well. So in this relative conventional world where we find ourselves there's this sense of I arises. Originally when we're born we don't have that sense of I. But as we get older and develop and our grandmother comes and pinches our cheeks we start to interact and have the sense that there's somebody other than I. There's the other. And then that brings about thoughts and then thoughts about the I develop. And gradually we generate a separate platform or what appears as a separate platform, the I, that has its consciousness. And then we start directing that consciousness, which goes where we place our attention, into all the different things in the world. So that we might know what is and who I am and what life is. So we pour our, atten our attention, our consciousness into this, we pour it into that. And after a while we realize that we're miserable, that something is deeply inside is not fulfilled. So then finally we get to the point where, or not finally, hopefully before the end, we get to the point where we place our consciousness onto awareness. We lift it up to awareness and there's bliss. So in the kind of, shall we say, the Vedic tradition, there is this term Satchit Anand. J Satchit Anand, Satchit Anand, Satchit Anand. And it's made up of three words, Sat, Jit and Anand. Sat is the truth. Now the truth is something that doesn't change under any conditions. The truth doesn't evolve. The truth wasn't born. The truth doesn't die. Sat. Awareness. Chit is consciousness. Consciousness is temporal. It comes and goes. It comes out of awareness, spirals around an eye, and for a short period of time creates an objective platform it never actually was not one with awareness, but it felt that it was. But when that consciousness is turned within, it finds awareness. And the result of that is it recognizes itself as bliss. And the I is seen as a temporary phenomena, which never had substantial existence. And this is the hard thing to grasp. J. 
just like a character in my dream. When I was experiencing the character in my sleep dream, that character certainly seemed to have substantial existence. But when I woke up and recognized I was the dreaming, I was dreaming, and that that dreaming was just arising in my consciousness, I wasn't even the dreamer. I was the witness of the dreaming. And when I woke up to that truth, I realized that none of it had any substantial existence whatsoever. And that even the consciousness states that I displayed in my dream were not real either. They had no substantial existence. They appeared to be real. I'm deeply asleep and I'm dreaming of meditating or I'm dreaming of having a profound experience or dreaming of Buddhas or something and it appears that I'm having a really profound experience a high state of consciousness in my dream but when I wake up I realize it had no substantial existence whatsoever And what is real is that which allowed these states that I experience of waking, dreaming and sleeping to be. That which, by that which supports and generates all that appears to be. But seeing from the vantage point of awareness So the I is gone and I've returned to my source of awareness. I am now, you can't even say I am awareness. Because there isn't an I in awareness that ever arose substantially. Just awareness. And then everything is seen in its true form. That consciousness is an appearance in a dream. And that all things that appear in this dream never substantially arise. Truth is that which doesn't change. Sat awareness. The sky, if you like. We couldn't say the sky was a thing, could we? You can't grasp it. You can't look at the sky. Your senses can't detect the sky. Yet clearly the sky is there because that's where the clouds and the weather roll by. If there wasn't the sky, where would they be? So one might say, the sky is like awareness. And states of consciousness is what unfolds in that sky. Some days it's great billowing clouds, powerful states of consciousness. And some days it's very fine and high, serene states of consciousness. States of consciousness unfold in awareness. Weather unfolds in the sky. The weather is always changing. There's no static state of consciousness. All states of consciousness continuously changing, transforming, moving. But could we say that of the sky? Sky-like awareness. Does the sky ever change? Does the sky have a center? Consciousness sometimes appears to have a center. Awareness not. Consciousness moves. Consciousness is more in one place than another. If a lot of people raise 
in a relative dream world reality raises our consciousness, a change is noticed. But awareness is not like that. Awareness is like the sky. It doesn't change. It doesn't matter what's going on in the sky. The sky, which is the essential, without the sky nothing would have any existence, holds it all, pervades it all. So when everything is put down, the psychological self is put down, the part we're playing in this dream, the part we're playing in the movie of our life, when it's put down for a moment, and we turn, look backwards to inquire what is looking out, and when we do that, we go backwards. What we find is sky-like awareness. It's as if a human being is given the illusion of consciousness so that eventually it looks back and recognizes that actually I'm a portal through a window through which awareness experiences. Why? Why is not such a great question? And if you want the answer to why, then look at all that's been. That's why. Or you could say, awareness takes form of, and gives consciousness to a dream being, me, so that it might know itself, so that there might be a subject and an object, so that gratitude might arise, so that wonder might arise, so that joy might arise. So much depends, what you see is given by who you're being that it is. Because we think there's a fixed way about everything, but there really isn't. Who you're being that it is gives you how you get it. And when you completely stop being any way that it is, and just let it be what it is without any projections upon it then consciousness and awareness align and then that's who I am So consciousness is the gift. Consciousness is, you know, the great gift of this life. That we have consciousness. But what is it that is the best thing to do with that consciousness? Pour it into my thinking? waste it on trying to make something happen in this dream world or seek its source the source of consciousness is awareness we could say that consciousness was the dynamic aspect of awareness When we sleep dream, most people think the content of the dream is what's important. 
I must look in the dream dictionary to find out what it means. I dreamt of an elephant standing on its hind legs on the top of a mountain. What does that mean? But actually more important than the content of the dream is the examination of, okay, what was that elephant made of? At the time it seemed wondrous and real. And the mountain seemed real. And the space around that the mountain was in seemed real. What generated that dream? Where did it come from? Did I dream it? So the benefit is, is looking and seeing, well, is that true on this domain, in this world, on this plane of existence? Is that what's happening as well? What would I see if I woke up here? First of all, is there the possibility of a further awakening? I was asleep dreaming, then I woke up. Is there a possibility of awakening on this level? Is there perhaps a fourth state? What is the awakening on this level? What would I see if I awoke? Would I actually see that none of this has any inherent substantial reality? That it's all dreamlike and what is real and unchanging is awareness, is the truth, the absolute truth. The absolute truth isn't a statement. A lot of people were looking for a statement of what the absolute truth are. Oh, the absolute truth is when da 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 and da. No. The absolute truth and complete awakeness are the same. The absolute truth, awareness, and complete and total awakeness are the same. So we might say, consciousness is how awareness looks into the dream. Consciousness is the currency between beings in a dream and that all happens in unchanging awareness but the good news is this it's not by speaking oh I get it no it's not like that it's a seeing This distinction of awareness and consciousness, that opens up a possibility of being, of seeing. Because it's there all the time. It's just been missed. Our consciousness has been going in the wrong direction. And then at some point we allow that to go within. I say within, it's not really within. And the consciousness returns and focuses and merges with awareness and there is the great revelation of what is real and what isn't real. Of what true joy is of what freedom really is and what the self really is
And this brings the end of suffering. Because suffering only comes because we are ignorant of what the truth of it all is. Like when you're in a nightmare, you're thinking that that's really real. You know, that the, you know, the dog with three heads, um, you know, is that's chasing you, drooling and barking, chasing you towards a cliff, and you're in complete panic because you think that the whole thing's real. You think the dog's got three heads is real. You think the cliff that you're running towards, and you don't know how deep the abyss is going to be or what's going to happen, is real. The terror that you're feeling is real. But that isn't how it is. And then you wake up and you go, oh my God. I was suffering because I forgot what is real. What is unchanging. What is ever present. What is omniscient. What is omnipotent. What is inconceivable. What is the source of all glory? I forgot. And my con my consciousness went elsewhere. And I suffered. And then we can bring our consciousness back. We, that's a choice we can make. That's a choice that arises and that we can go with. And then we realize, oh my God, this consciousness actually is awareness. It's a dynamic form of awareness. But I get to choose where I want to, where I focus that consciousness. And I realize that I'm not looking for consciousness states. They're, they come and they go. And they have consequences. I'm looking for that which does not change. And when that is comes into being then a natural surrender happens and one comes out of identifying as the part one was playing in the dream and one wakes up oh my god it's not as I thought it was in the dream at all So I hope this has been helpful and that you you are able to make that distinction because that is what wakes us up. So have a wonderful day flowing as awareness. Somebody said here, how do you get purpose out of your aware consciousness? There's no purpose. There is no purpose. You get to choose your purpose. If you have awakened, what will naturally arise in you? Compassion. And that compassion will seek some kind of outlet some kind of expression you'll do some service for your brothers and sisters or the planet or both there is no purpose apart from the one that you invent for yourself when you recognize this awareness or when it is allowed to be what it is, undis uninterfered with by you and your fluctuating consciousness, when it just is what it is and you are it, then profound gratitude arises, which motivates you to generate a purpose. 
I now see there are people sleeping, there are people suffering, there are people dreaming. By some great grace I have awakened. I am beholden it. I must help them. And that becomes the purpose. But there is no, you know, if there is a purpose at all, it's to wake up. And then after you've woken up, what's the purpose going to be? To wake others. All other purposes are reflections of who you're being that your life is at the time that you invent the purpose for yourself. So, any more questions there? No. I see I've got some beautiful friends there today. Sending you my love. I hope you can feel it. So, I'll see you tomorrow.